and welcome to another episode of the Shite and Sarcasm Engineering Show. In today's episode, representing that well-known suburb of Taiwan, we have Milton Keynes. No, none other than this, which is a Genesis frame. It is a Croix Defer Ti. I think that's pronounced Qua. Um, the French in me suggests it was pronounced Qua. Now, the chap who owns this bike uh, emailed me with a rather touching headline, which was, Is it effed? And, um, well, yes, it is. <laughs> it is F. So this is a titanium frame. It is um, the product of, a, well, I guess the, a British company called Madison. So Madison are well known for being a distributor of a large number of bike brands, mainly in the UK, Shimano. So that's their, probably what they're most, best well known for. The Genesis brand is their bike frame brand. Uh, and they also have, or did used to have, a bike team, cycling team, called Madison Genesis. Now this frame has actually got a union flag on here, and then in very small print underneath it, it says made in Taiwan. So Union Jack, and then made in Taiwan. Um, the frame itself, now I, I'm, you know, the initial thought when I looked at this was, oh fuck, it's titanium. Um, but, you know, we'll come on to that in a minute. Now he brought it because he was having trouble pedaling. Now this is a Shimano 105 crank set, and that's me turning it around. I've je checked the preload nuts, they're all to the correct um, torque, so that's what's going on. Now the first thing you look at when you look at that is there's something not right. Now spin tests have their place in the world, but generally you shouldn't go by them. But this, I mean just, just spinning it, I can tell there's something wrong. So I'll take this apart and, and we'll, we'll explain. Before we go any further and to satisfy those people who love disc brakes, there is a reason why I don't like disc brakes and it's a practical reason. So this is a disc brake bike, Shimano um, rotor setup, and we have this disc which is the ICE technology one and um, if you look at it, it's got loads of slits in it. Now if you want to go fast, you would never put any slits in, so they've put the slits in to dissipate heat, so you increase what's known as the Nusselt number, so that is a function of your heat transfer coefficient. By doing that, you actually make it much less aerodynamic, because to get rid of heat, you need to generate turbulence. The other, the other more pr pressing reason is, if we do this, you can hear it rubbing. So, that annoys me, <laughs> really annoys me, but it's, again, it's not my bike. While we're here, the fork on this appears to be carbon. The rest of the bike is titanium. Upon initial inspection of this, this looks like it has not been stress relieved. Um, the bottom bracket and the frame itself doesn't look like it's been stress relieved. The other thing is I'm not sure if this has been threaded before welding or after welding. At a guess, I'd say it was threaded before welding. Um, which is not the correct sequence to do things, in my opinion, but I've seen other people do it, like Boardman and just generally most bike suppliers. Also, stress relieving is, after you've welded it, you have some residual stress inside the tubes. So you're supposed to heat it up to a temperature, for which titanium I can't remember, but I'm sure I'll explain it in the PowerPoint, um, and then you let it cool in air, and that re re removes the stresses. Now this doesn't look like that's had that done. I mean, the quality of the welding to the naked eye looks okay, but you know, I have my suspicions on that. This is the 105 crank set, there's nothing really wrong with that. This kind of tells us everything we need to know, so this is the non-drive side, look at that, and that's the drive side, so as you can see this, this isn't quite right. Now he's actually set, gave, given me two bottom brackets, so this is the Shimano one, and this one is the um, Prime one, so Prime is Wiggle Chain Reaction's own brand, and yeah, <laughs> that's not great at all. So there's a clearly a fault with the non-drive side. So we'll have a look at that. So this is the bottom bracket, and this is the non-drive side chainstay. It may not be immediately obvious to the camera, but this is actually bowed, slightly egg-shaped, um, which is almost 
certainly the reason why it's caused that uh, fault on the um, bottom bracket cup. That you might think is cross-threaded, it, it probably is cross-threaded, the, the, the underlying cause is not by user error, it's caused by that. So we need to fix that. Right, here we go, it's that time of the show again. It is PowerPoint time, so I know that I am one of the most popular PowerPoint presenters on the planet. Genesis Le Crap, full stop. By Hambini, aged five. We obviously need to do our checks because, you know, we do need to do those checks. So, is the pen working? The pen is, oh, I've missed out of space there, working. And now we move on to the next slide. Right, this does, does my head in. <laughs> this is the, the, um, the seat tube from the uh, the bike. I don't know if people are ashamed to say that something is made in the Far East or whatnot, but you've got your Union flag here, and then in very small letters underneath it, it says "Made in Taiwan," um, and it it just does my head in. It does my head in. I don't know. Don't know. Is it just covert racism? What we're anti-Taiwanese or anti-Chinese? Don't know. Right, overview. It is the Genesis Le Crap. Titanium frame made in Taiwan, I've already said that right. The bottom bracket is BSA. So it is 1.37 inches. So there's an inch symbol in there by 24 teeth per inch. So if you are wondering what all that means, 24 teeth per inch means if you draw the teeth out and the space there was one inch which is 25.4 millimeters. You've got 24 teeth. So that's what that means. Now on some Shimano bottom brackets, I've seen that written as 1.37 by 1.0. That is like the biggest clusterfuck of units that you can imagine because it's 1.37 inches by 1.0 millimetres. So 20, 24 teeth per inch is about a one millimetre thread pitch. Anyway, so the chap tried a Shimano bottom bracket and he also tried a Prime Wiggle bottom bracket. So that's some cheapskate bottom bracket that um, Wiggle sell, Wiggle Chain Reaction sell. Um, I mean, it's cheap. It's just cheap, it uses no name bread bearings and yeah, we go from there. Um, but that's not really the root cause of this problem anyway. Right, he complained of poor, bulb, poor bottom bracket life, very high, I mean, he said he was getting dropped by people that he was much fitter than. Now, if you were to do the maths on this, he's probably pushing out several more watts in that bottom bracket uh, and through the crank than um, someone who doesn't have those things to worry about. Um, he also tried um, retapping it. So tried that. Right, the problems. So first of all, it's not round. So here we go. I've marked on in arrows. Hopefully it is more visible, but you can see, I mean there, that that is that distance there is much smaller than that distance there. So um, it's yeah, it's not round. It's not centralized. It may also be obvious from this picture that if you look carefully, you can see it looks almost like it's egg-shaped along there. So it's longer that way than it is that way. Yeah. So the threads are consequently distorted. I don't think the frame has been stress relieved and I will come on to that in a minute. And then, has it been threaded and then welded? Again, I don't know. Um, I'd a guess, I'd say it has been, but again, it's, it's not something you can categorically say one way or the other. Uh, here's another picture to show you something that's not round. So that's my bottom bracket in there. Um, and then if you look here, I'll, I'll put the arrows in there, but the, the black line there versus the black line here, and it, it gets bigger before it gets smaller around there. So that's where we are with that. 
Um, the next thing, stress relief. So when you weld something, um, you typically have this. So the, the metal before you weld it looks like that. So if it's called a butt weld, um, oops, this is called a V groove prep. And then you lay your weld in through there and you get a bit that comes out the bottom. And then that's your weld material in there. Because of the V shape, the distance across here is much bigger than the distance across here. So when it shrinks, it naturally wants to curl up, which is what this is showing you here. Because heating it and then cooling it, it will try and shrink when it cools. So what people do is they put some restraint on here and that is typically what you would see when they jig it. So when they put a jig onto a um, bike frame, they have the various tubes, line the tubes up and then weld it. As it cools, the restraint holds it where it's gonna stay and then you end up with some tension in the welds because that stress hasn't gone anywhere. So in order to stress relieve it, that's what you have to do, which is um, heat it up and then allow it to cool slowly. So for titanium, it's about six to 700 degrees Celsius. Right, now this is an exaggerated schematic. I must emphasize it is exaggerated. There are some issues with holding, well, well this fix. The biggest problem is holding the bike frame. So it's got frame with all the bits already on it. You know, how do you hold it? And then finding the middle of a hole that's egg shaped. So this, you know, this is the hole, um, the blue line. And you can see it's not quite perfectly round. Well, where's the middle? Do we pick here or do we pick here or here? It's like a game of pin the penis onto the donkey. Um, you're not quite sure where to go. So that is you know, one of the problems. And then we come on to, um, I should just actually explain that. What I did was I clocked it to the drive side. So this is the elongated nasty shape. The drive side was a bit more round. Obviously I haven't drawn the circle there perfectly round, but it was a lot better. So in the end I just clocked to that and then that became the datum for both sides, which is what you want. Right, this is where it gets a bit more convoluted. So I've just explained about the, um, the the drive side. My bottom brackets, the threaded ones, have they're only two pieces, so they don't have um, like a centre sleeve, uh, sort of like a plastic sleeve between them. This, this piece is designed like that to make it align properly. So this is a T forty seven. So it's got a centre sleeve that goes in to give you the alignment. Um, to make it concentric because that is what gives you low friction all this bollocks about ceramic bearings giving you you know the ultimate in speed is total and utter trash it's rubbish complete bollocks the best thing to do is to sort out the fit and sort out the alignment and I think it's been proven on this channel time and time again this is um, the normal normal so that if, if this was the um, the bike so oh god I didn't spell that properly and this bit is the bottom bracket and I've, I've labeled that softer part now when I was on PowerPoint I flipped the thing over and it changed the text to upside down but it says softer part it says um, the, the bit that's been trashed and I've just shown you the, the threaded in cups that have, have gotten trashed normally um, you get an even thread engagement between the male part and the female part. Now you might be looking at it thinking well the gap here is different to the gap here uh, and that's because my PowerPoint skills are shite. This is a DBR. I will leave it to the commentators to figure out what that means. Um, it's phonetically spelt and it tries to bend the bottom bracket so you can see the pitch is actually the same, so it's always um, uh, a one mil pitch or 24 teeth per inch. So the distance between there and there, and this between there and there, and there, it remains the same. But what's happened is, is actually bent up. 
and that's what we've got in this bottom bracket. So we've got some deflection um, going on. All right, we just need to clear the paint on this slide. Pointer options, erase all link on slide. Right, and then you're putting that part in. So the soft part goes in, and this is where all of that, call it cross-threading if you will, but that's where the damage um, takes place. So because the thread's distorted, you have to you fix that. So in, in, in essence, in order to fix this, all I did was um, get it straight and then um, make it slightly slacker. So if, if you're talking practical terms, so this is like a, a T47 bottom bracket, you've got about 0.4 millimeters of free movement um, up and down, left and right, from one end to the other, so that you can misalign it by, by that much. Now if you put the sleeve on it, or you have this type of bottom bracket, then it's nowhere near 0.4 millimeters. It's it's you know you're getting on towards like 25, 50 microns. Um, so 0.05, 0.06 millimeters. It's it's a huge difference across there. 0.05 is is perfectly acceptable. Um, so that's where that comes from. So let's take you back and show you it fixed. So that's now been corrected. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with some mobile SHC. So shout out to the mobile man. Um, he watches the channel and when I um, whinge that I couldn't get hold of any, he's actually sent me some. So that is pretty good. Um, so we'll put some of that mobile in there. And then screw this up. The bottom bracket that's going in is BSA to Shimano. This is one of my bottom brackets, so it has got um, a sensor sleeve that doubles up as an alignment tool, as it were. That's probably ideal in this scenario because um, there's a bit of play inside the uh, thread, mainly because the hole is ever so slightly oval, but it's been re-threaded now anyway. It was a bit of a pain getting the datum actually. Give this a tight turn, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. And then as it screws in, we will get the tool on it, give it a tighten. So that's all in. It's actually quite a decent colour with the bike. So that's in, um, we do need to pinch these two Allen bolts up, but that's about it. And that brings us to the end of this video, I really hope you enjoyed it, if you did, remember to smash that like button, if you didn't, go screw yourselves. As always, keep banging your hairdresser.